I've heard you speak about um, sending young offenders to jail is not a good way to re- rehabilitate them. Are you able to talk about why that is and then what other solutions do you propose? Yeah. Um, I guess first, the, the, just the evidence continues to show us that these youth prisons, the institutions we create in these environments, um, one, they're not very humane. They don't treat young people very well and they often end up being more traumatizing the whole process. And the result is that those young people come out um, uh, having not had the basic reasons why they ended up causing harm in the community addressed. They come straight back into the community and they cause further harm, right? So the evidence is really clear that they just do not work. Um, and so we punishment throw. doesn't teach them a lesson? Con- punch- punishment, consequence, I won't do it again? You don't, you don't think that works? Punitive punishment doesn't necessarily work, right? The the reason being it's not actually understanding or addressing why that young person is actually causing harmful behavior in the first place, right? Um, What does work is accountability and consequences, totally for accountability and consequences, but they need to be delivered in a way that a child can understand them and learn from them. The, The punitive justice system, the way it operates here in New Zealand and many places in the West, doesn't actually... Um, respond in a way that uh, a person who is like, is once again, keeping in the youth justice space, you know, a child who's traumatized, who's actually, you know, there's a range of real like complex factors going on and they don't understand what's happening to them. It's been done to them. They're not learning from that experience. They're then being isolated, pulled out of their communities, put in another institution. They're getting institutionalized and more harm is happening. It is, there's, there's nothing within these institutions which, um, which is built off like evidence based with you know a, an understanding of child psychology or youth development and so what i'm a proponent for is ensuring that actually uh we don't just react to what's happening in our community we actually respond to it and we ensure that we provide systems that provide accountability and support for young people um in a way that is actually going to make some change happen for them and ensure that actually we have safer communities at the end of this It does kind of sound like, I mean, this is just maybe me playing devil's advocate here, but it does sound kind of like wishful thinking in a way. Oh, well, because if you're living in those neighborhoods where, Mm. you know, your house is constantly broken into or your car is being smashed up or whatever, you're going to want those people to go to jail. Yeah. Like it sounds like wishful thinking to just say. So, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So let's talk about that. Um, There are some things that we know, so in New Zealand context, again, there's some things we know that are working, right? So lower level offending, especially, um, when a young person becomes involved in the youth justice system, um, getting them into our youth justice process really quickly. What we do is we bring them in. We have a family group conference. The community is brought into that conversation. We have a look at what has actually gone on, what led to that offending. There is a conversation around what amends would look like and what accountability would look like, and they do that with their community. And then straight away, they're onto it, and we start pulling the support around. And actually, hey, if this is a crime related to poverty, there's some housing issues with the whanau, we get the support in, and we start making change. And for the majority of young people, they don't actually reoffend, and we see some success, right? There's a small group in Aotearoa in New Zealand who continue to reoffend, and there's some real challenges there. Um, again, their context is really, really difficult. So you've got young people that have, you know, who are experiencing homelessness, who have like mental illness, there's addiction, they don't have safe environments, there's nowhere safe to live. And some of that offending can be quite, you know, unsafe, as you've talked about, or, or terrible, right? Um, and so the question is not, well, there shouldn't be any accountability. It's how do you design the system that actually works? And if we look at the evidence, what we know works for children and young people is much smaller localized services which are in community there may be some boundaries in terms of being able to come and go right so it may be a system where a young person has to stay there right um but putting young people into large institutional facilities um do the opposite have the opposite effect of what we're trying to achieve and so you know what we see around the world uh, even in the states really interesting they're closing down their youth prisons um, because they haven't worked funnily enough it was biden who was advocating for youth prisons back in the i think it was the 80s he's now overseeing a huge transformation where they're shutting down those youth prisons and what people are moving towards is localized systems that are much smaller have a kind of like a home sort of fano feel um, and are connected to their communities and they start to do that rehabilitation and growth and stuff in that space 